Are you stressing out about how little time you have to pick a main before release? Or perhaps you're watching this halfway into Dragonflight and just wondering which class to level as your next ult? In this video, I'll be giving you a quick preview to every class in the game, including the lore, fantasy, a quick word about each spec, how it plays and their key abilities, and their job in every single type of content. I likely have class guides and spec guides coming out during Dragonflight, so if you're interested in that, drop your boy a sub. And without further ado, let's get strapped in, grab yourself a nice drink, and enjoy the show. For as long as war has raged, heroes from every race have aimed to master the art of battle. Only those who possess strength, leadership, and vast knowledge of arms are able to walk the path of the warrior and wreak havoc in glorious combat. Warriors are plate-wearing berserkers who strive for perfection in armed combat using their pure strength and rage to engage targets at close range, destroying anything that stands in their way. Along with their high mobility, they use diverse combat tactics, identifying weak spots and executing enemies with a wide variety of weapon types. Every dragon slain, corrupted tyrant toppled, and demon banished from Azeroth has trembled in the face of these lords of war. As warriors deal or take damage, their rage grows, allowing them to deliver truly crushing attacks in the heat of battle, and using furious shouts to rally their allies and intimidate their enemies. You are almost guaranteed to find at least one in every raid group, not only to provide their allies with battle shout, increasing attack power by 5%, but also to bring commanding shout, temporarily increasing the health of your entire group, especially good for large incoming damage spikes. On top of this, warriors revel in their enemy's final moments, specializing in execute damage, which is particularly strong for progress rating. All three specializations are very engaging and fast paced. Their talent trees are some of the best designed with loads of different options at the bottom for buffing your major abilities, leaving you able to spec into a variety of different playstyles. Arms warriors prefer power over speed. They take their time to deliver huge hits and shatter their enemies' defenses, setting up windows of opportunity in which they will attempt to finish off a foe. They aim to keep up bleeds like rend and deep wounds by using mortal strike as much as they can, and they fit their hardest hitting abilities like bladestorm and thunderous roar into their colossus smash windows. By managing rage carefully, they can hugely increase their damage by resetting overpower with a tactician talent and improving Colossus smash uptime due to the cooldown reduction from anger management. Arms is unparalleled in two target cleave with their sweeping strikes ability and can easily become a whirling storm of metal death on AoE with devastating blade storms and a huge amount of talents to buff their whirlwind damage. But undoubtedly their defining niche is their insane execute capability, running away from everyone on the damage meters as soon as the enemy hits 35%. Infinite execute spam will buff your mortal strikes further, refund rage and increase critical strike chance and Fatality will deliver a huge blow when the boss hits 30%. Fury Warriors are berserkers, unleashing a flurry of attacks, carving their opponents to pieces. This is an incredibly fast paced spec with zero downtime. As a Fury Warrior, there is always something for you to press. These bloodthirsty titans focus their anger, allowing the heat of battle to send them into a rampage, enraging them to increase their damage and unlock their most powerful attacks. They fill and empty their rage bar with extreme haste, maintaining enrage by using Rampage. With almost an endless supply of raging blows due to talents, increasing the amount of charges you can hold and offering reset mechanics, there is almost never a need to use Bloodburst. Once getting your hands on a bit of haste, you should be able to cool down your recklessness very fast with anger management too, and extend its uptime with Rampage and Unbridled Ferocity. Odin's Fury has also returned in Dragonflight, dealing a large AoE around you and giving you extra haste on your auto attacks. That on top of Kyrian Spear will take warriors to unparalleled levels of AoE damage potential. The Protection Warrior seeks to be an unbreakable wall, using a sturdy shield to both soak up foes' attacks and dish out damage of their own. They have very strong defensive capabilities, with strong cooldowns in Shield Wall, Demoralizing Shout and Last Stand, and yet can put out incredible DPS, not only generating a lot of threat, but also in some cases allowing you to compete with damage dealers in your group. The tankiness is dependent on how much rage you can generate from Shield Slam and Thunderclap. This will then be spent on either Shield Block or Ignore Pain, which are off the global cooldown so they don't interfere with your rotation. Avatar is an extremely good damage cooldown if the Unstoppable Force talent is taken, reducing the cooldown of Thunderclap by 50% 
and increasing its damage too. This also applies to Shockwave if taken, which can hit incredibly hard with Sonic Boom, while providing your group an AoE stun on a very low cooldown. Thunderclap will also automatically apply Ren to targets around you, so you don't even need it on your bars. There is so much room to shine on this spec if you can properly manage your damage intake, threat and kiting, allowing you to play almost like a glass cannon. Warriors have always had a spot in PvP with a very consistent damage profile and strong anti-heal in Mortal Strike. They can really let loose with a healer and almost guarantee a kill whenever an enemy drops into their execute range. On screen is a first look at the Warriors tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. Whether striking down opponents with mighty two-handed weapons, tearing into packs of enemies in a whirlwind of steel, or standing firm in the face of death itself, you can't go wrong with the warrior. Hunters are master marksmen. They use a plethora of different shots to take down their prey. From venomous barbs and magical projectiles, to explosive volleys and penetrating power shots. While those who focus on melee combat do so with pole arms, executing deft flanking maneuvers, and being particularly skilled at throwing their weapons. Hunters are also masters of survival, and their familiarity with traps and misdirection can allow them to manipulate their foes, leading them into deadly ambushes, or camouflaging themselves so well that even the sharpest eyed foes cannot fix their aim upon them. Hunters are also capable of using their connection to the aspects of various animals to empower themselves and their allies, augmenting their abilities according to the needs of the situation. Hunters have a powerful connection to the wild and an uncanny ability to befriend even the wildest of beasts. Hunters form a deep bond with their pets and are rarely found without a fierce companion at their side. Perhaps the most involved companion class of all, hunters can track, tame, name and train a huge range of animals throughout the world. The number of special rare beasts existing solely for hunters to discover, hidden from the eyes of any other class and each type of pet boasts its own selection of special abilities. The combination of Hunter's powerful range damage capabilities and their pet's aggro management makes Hunters an excellent soloing class, essentially a two-man team, capable of tackling enemies far beyond the capabilities of many other classes. The Hunter is a pure DPS class, meaning that all its specializations focus primarily on dealing damage. What makes the Hunter so great is that it's very easy to pick up and learn and also even excel at with three separate gameplay styles that can change dramatically. However, each spec has its own strengths and weaknesses. Beast Mastery Hunters are masters of the wild, boasting a powerful synergy with their companions, even having extra options when it comes to the diversity of beasts that they contain. They bring numerous enhancement to both their own pet's abilities, keeping up the frenzy buff on their pet with the use of Barbshot, sending them into a murderous rampage with Bestial Wrath and further enhancing their burst windows with cooldown reduction talents. Their damage profile is very consistent and they can keep up AoE damage at all times via Beast Cleave with absolutely no restrictions to their movement, being able to do 100% of their potential damage at all times. Marksmanship Hunters are skilled sharpshooters, focusing on defeating opponents through unique and additionally empowered ranged attacks. They must stand still to unleash their most powerful attack, Aim Shot, however also have freedom to move outside of the short cast window. Marksmanship Hunters are known for their huge amounts of burst on demand, with their main cooldown True Shot turning them into a turret for 15 seconds, massively reducing the cooldown and cost of their most powerful abilities. This coupled with talents like Careful Aim, increasing your damage by 50% to high health targets, means you'll do some of the highest damage at the start of every boss, along with valuable execute damage with kill shot and bullseye. Survival hunters are adaptive rangers who can engage enemies effectively at any distance. They focus on cleaving with wildfire bomb, which rotates each time you use it, having three different bomb types to potentially change up your rotation in some scenarios. With a mixture of bleeds, poisons and pet damage, they can deal about 80% of their damage from range, which is huge for a melee spec and can even spec into a cooldown to make their melee abilities a 40 yard range every single minute. When it comes to raiding, there is usually one hunter spec that's near the top of the meters very consistently, so there's a good chance at always having a spot in the group. It also brings an immunity in Aspect of the Turtle, which is often extremely useful in a raid setting, not only allowing you to survive, but also to cheese certain mechanics on some bosses. Each spec has its own specific niche to fill, so if you need to change spec while you're progressing a boss, perhaps to a damage profile that's better suited, then you absolutely can, and it's very beneficial to learn all three specs because of this. 
and you'll historically find that hunters can be used in a huge range of PvP comps. The signature scatter shot into ice trap combo is particularly deadly, allowing a consistent CC chain on a 30 second cooldown to create high pressure and win games. This trend of there being a superior spec just means that you have the opportunity to play the entire class overall throughout the expansion and always at some point be very, very viable in all forms of content. On screen is a first look at the Hunter's tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If you're looking for a class that nails its fantasy and is always relevant with a low barrier to entry, definitely consider checking out the Hunter. Students gifted with a keen intellect and unwavering discipline may walk the path of the mage. Masters of all schools of magic, the arcane magic available to magi is both great and dangerous, and thus is revealed only to the most devoted practitioners. To avoid interference with their spellcasting, mages wear only cloth armor, but compensate for this with a range of armor and barrier spells, wreathing themselves in flame, frost, or even arcane energies. Skilled mages can even summon mirror images of themselves to confuse the opposition. Mages are a powerful presence on the battlefield. To keep enemies at bay, magi can summon bursts of fire to incinerate distant targets and cause entire areas to erupt, setting groups of foes ablaze. Masters of Ice can command blizzards that tear into the flesh of their enemies and limit their movement. Mages can use their mental powers to alter the very fabric of reality, turning snarling attackers into harmless sheep or even altering time itself. Quick of mind and fleet of foot, mages stay one step ahead of their enemies. Masters of kiting, they can use their enviable range of snares to defeat whole groups of opponents without putting a hair out of place. They are quick and can blink away from attackers, deploy a frost nova or ring a frost to freeze whole groups in place or even throw a polymorph for a quick escape. And if an enemy should get too close, mages can ice block to be healed back up. They can even slip behind enemy lines with invisibility or avoid confrontation entirely. Powerful magi can quicken the minds of their allies, granting a bloodlust effect through time warp and providing the arcane intellect buff, generating enhancements, refreshments and portals, transporting groups of players instantly across the world. The mage specializes in burst damage and area of effect spells and are well known for their impressive damage output, as well as their range of crowd control abilities and useful utility spells such as counterspell and spell steal. Arcane mages manipulate raw arcane magic, destroying enemies with overwhelming power. They value their mana more than other specs, guzzling through it if they aren't careful with their arcane charges. While bombarding their targets with arcane missile channels, they deal incredible focus target damage with their frequent burst windows, making use of touch of the magi and radiant spark to cleave all enemies around their main target, building up arcane charges and dumping them with huge arcane barrage crits. They also have tools like arcane orb and explosion to quickly build resources for sustained AoE damage. Fire mages focus the pure essence of fire magic, assaulting enemies with combustive flames, they aim to land crits with fireball to generate heating up and then turn those into hot streaks through fire blast to fire off instant pyro blasts. Creating these pyro blast chains is integral to their damage and by using the ignite mechanic, the majority of their damage will spread passively to surrounding targets. Fire Mage offers an excellent one minute cooldown burst window with combustion, bursting into flames and granting 100% crit on all of your abilities for 10 seconds. This offers incredible bursts on AoE and single target. Fire's other strengths include that they are fully mobile and can bring strong execute damage, particularly potent in a raiding scenario. And they also have one of the best defensive toolkits in the game, being able to spec into a cheat death through cauterize on top of their usual ice blocks and barriers. Frost mages freeze enemies in their tracks and shatter them into pieces with frost magic, offering very high consistent single target and cleave damage. Frost is a proc based spec with a simple but reactive gameplay loop pummeling their targets with frost bolts and their bread and butter combo of flurry, followed up by two ice lance casts to shatter their foes with guaranteed critical strikes. Particularly potent if specced into glacial spike, firing a huge icicle for massive damage. They are very mobile with a good range of instant cast spells, passively cleaving with splitting ice and calling down blizzards and comet storms on AoE packs. Through skilled gameplay, they can extend their DPS cooldowns to have near 100% uptime. Being a pure DPS class, Mage historically always has at least one spec that's going to be viable in PvE and PvP. 
If you're a mage and you're capable of playing all the specs at progression level, then you're in a very strong place for any raid, being able to switch freely if one spec's niche fits a fight better. They also bring an immunity in the form of ice block, preventing all damage for a time while holding you in place. Cross mages can also do this twice in quick succession with cold snap, placing them into their own category when it comes to usefulness on certain fights. In PvP, mages typically operate by setting up CC chains into burst windows, slowly burning through your enemy's defensives each time until you inevitably land a kill. Because mage is so slippery, they can easily play without a healer too. Frost is a spec with the highest amount of control and will provide more constant pressure than its burstier counterparts. We use Combustion and Arcane Surge to try and land a kill. In Mythic Plus, the mage is almost always one of the top damage dealers and they have been highly coveted in every season so far. On screen is a first look at the mage's tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If you're looking for a very safe caster pick with all three specs having different and engaging rotations, look no further than the mage. For as long as there were dark alleys and needs for dark services, there have been rogues. And thus, they are one of the oldest professions in Azeroth. Rogues fend for themselves, looking for fights in which they dictate the terms. The diverse aspects of their trade requires rogues to be well versed in lockpicking, toxicology and brawling. There's an unparalleled art to what they do. For rogues, the only code is the contract, and their allegiance is purchased in gold. Free from the constraints of a conscience, these mercenaries rely on brutal and efficient tactics, which are regarded by most as vile and cowardly. As lethal assassins and masters of stealth, they will approach their marks from behind, piercing a vital organ and vanishing into the shadows before the victim even hits the ground. They are rarely seen entering a fight without weapons laced in poison and ample supplies of everything from bombs to elixirs in their backpacks. Their attacks concentrate on weak points in the body in an attempt to finish fights brutally and quickly. With the rogue's precise planning, the first strike is often the last step before the killing blow. Rogue combat centers around spending their energy on instant attacks to build up combo points which are then used to unleash more powerful finishing moves on the target. With their distinctive stealth ability, rogues are capable of sneaking through the shadows unnoticed. Rogues can also stifle their opponents with a variety of poisons, bleeds, stuns and other disabling effects to keep them locked down, and are particularly elusive, having a number of strong defensive abilities to make them adept at escaping combat when the odds turn against them. Assassination rogues must dual wield daggers. Their toolkit is based on heavy damage over time through poison effects, rapid auto attacks, and abilities that cause bleed damage. Careful planning is required to execute the rotation effectively, making the spec feel surgical. The main gameplay loop relies on building combo points slowly through mutilate and spacing out your envenom finishers to maintain a high uptime on the buff it provides, which will increase your poison application chance. On top of this, you can take advantage of short burst windows with shiv, Exsanguinate and Deathmark, previously known as Vendetta, increasing the nature damage you deal to the target and causing your bleeds and poisons to tick twice as hard. Outlaw is a very fast paced spec where you can hit a lot of buttons for direct damage. It is one of if not the fastest and most involved melee spec in the game. It deals both great single target and AoE cleave damage and has access to the iconic blade flurry mechanic allowing you to do AoE damage by continuing with your standard rotation instead of relying on AoE specific abilities and rotations. This does simplify your thought process slightly so you can focus on just learning and perfecting the main playstyle. Rather than requiring stealth and relying on powerful openers, you can simply run up to most targets and quickly hack away at them, building up combo points with saber slash and pistol shot while maintaining personal buffs through the use of roll the bones. These enhancements are random and will augment the characteristics of some of your abilities, which you will slightly tailor your playstyle to depending on the outcome of each role. Outlaw rogues will constantly generate an insane amount of combo points, translating into a ton of finishers, not only doing damage directly, but also giving reduction to most of your offensive abilities cooldowns through a passive called Restless Blades. This also includes their main DPS cooldown, Adrenaline Rush. Subtlety rogues on the other hand like to stay in the shadows, once they have initiated their attack, a subtlety rogue focuses on accumulating as many combo points as possible in a short amount of time, relying on high burst damage at the beginning of combat and pooling energy to maximize damage during shadow dance windows, which will allow the use of powerful stealth specific abilities in combat. Outside of these windows, you will be maintaining slice and dice and rupture on your target 
always planning ahead for your next burst window. Shuriken Storm is an incredible AoE, easily being able to generate maximum combo points in a single use and allowing you to pump finisher after finisher into your enemies. This is exceptionally strong in certain scenarios where there is a priority target and switching your finisher from Black Powder to Eviscerate crowns this spec as one of the best funnel damage dealers in the entire game. When it comes to defensives, Rose can provide a response to every kind of damage. Faint reduces damage taken from area of effect abilities, particularly strong in raid encounters. Evasion and Cloak of Shadows prevent all physical and magic damage respectively, acting as an immunity. Rogues can also heal themselves with Crimson Vial, and if all else fails, they have a cheat death. In Mythic Plus, they also provide a lot of utility with their frequent stuns, gouges and kicks, and groups will never turn down their Shroud of Concealment. In PvP, Rogues are the king of control and disruption. If played well, they can take down almost anyone in a 1v1. With so much available to them, they can set up long CC chains with blind, sap and kidney shot, and when it comes to going for a kill, still provide huge amounts of burst damage and send someone to their grave in just a few seconds. On screen is a first look at the rogue's tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If you're looking for a strong fantasy with three very different playstyles and a ton of flavor items and quest lines, consider checking out the rogue. Priests are spiritually devoted and express their unwavering faith by serving the people. For millennia, they have left behind the confines of their temples and the comfort of their shrines so they can support their allies in war-torn lands. In the midst of terrible conflict, no hero questions the value of the priestly orders. These masters of the healing arts keep their companions fighting far beyond their normal capacities with an array of restorative powers and blessings. The divine forces at the priest's command can also be turned against foes, smiting them with holy fury. As light cannot exist without darkness, and darkness without light, some priests tap into shadow to better understand their own abilities, as well as the abilities of those who threaten them. The priest is a master of healing and truly one of the most iconic classes, restoring health to their wounded allies and shielding them in their toughest battles. They are highly desirable in any group, especially raids, with their raid-wide buff Power Word Fortitude, granting health to the whole group. And every player covets their extremely powerful external Power Infusion, granting 30% haste and usable on any member of your party. Shadow Priests use the power of Darkness and Void. Their spells wreak havoc in the opponent's minds, dealing strong and consistent damage and they can easily be distinguished amongst their peers with their signature ability, Shadow Form, enveloping them with the powers of the Void. They possess powerful cooldowns, being able to summon a Shadow Fiend by their side generating insanity, and with Void Form, they can further tap into the power of the Void, changing their abilities in the process, and granting access to Void Bolt. To maximize their damage, they use a combination of Mind Blast, Mind Flay, and Void Bolt to build their insanity, and spend it on Devouring Plague a hard-hitting nuke in the form of a short damage over time, all while keeping track of their other dots. Their potential damage ceiling scales with as many targets as they have access to, so long as you can keep your dots up on all of them. And they bring decent execute to raid encounters with Twist of Fate. They also have a pseudo-immunity called Dispersion, which can be used to negate big chunks of damage, helping them survive the toughest damage outputs. Combine this with class-wide defensives and you'll find that this is a very tanky specialization if played correctly. Holy priests are believers in the light and divine, using it to mend their allies and light their darkest moments. They are firm believers in justice and grace, as even in death, their thirst to protect their allies cannot be quenched. After having fallen, they can remain casting for a short time with spirit of redemption, saving their allies as their final act. The holy priest is a very simple but elegant specialization, reacting to what is the best choice to heal at every moment. They will often be casting their effective single target heal and flash heal abilities. Very imaginative names I know. Along with Holy Word Serenity, these can quickly and efficiently save those who are closest to death. And there are many interactions between these abilities. One of these is Trail of Light, allowing for multiple enemies to be healed at a time, even with these single target abilities. Even though Holy is known for their direct approach to healing, their mastery Echo of Light is extremely effective causing all of their direct heals to leave a heal over time on affected targets. They also have strong AoE healing abilities to help in the time of need. Not only can Holy Priests obliterate healing meters with their strong cooldowns, but you can also support your fellow healers with Divine Hymn, bolstering the healing taken from your allies, and Symbol of Hope to grant their mana back. Holy Priests also possess possibly the most iconic external cooldown in the game, with Guardian Spirit, a targeted cheat death 
granting increased healing received, and should they die during the buff, shall be brought back to life. Discipline priests balance the powers of darkness and light to create a unique style of inflicting pain on their opponents and simultaneously healing their allies. The discipline priest thrives on foresight, setting up and preparing for the inevitable damage coming in the near future. Using their flash heal, power word shield, and power word radiance, they can prepare atonements on their allies, and then activate these atonements by dealing damage. They can further bolster their damage with Schism in combination with other hard-hitting abilities like Mindbender, Penance, and Mind Blast. This will push out extra damage and therefore extra healing. While in Raid, the Disciplined Priest uses their atonements with care, setting up for incoming damage, often referred to as ramps. Combining this with Evangelism to extend atonements is very powerful for group-wide healing. And with their other cooldowns Rapture and Power Word Barrier, they become monsters who are sought out by the best skills to take down the hardest encounters. In PvP, Holy and Discipline Priests are frequently used. They are one of the most played classes of all time, and they synergize extremely well with Rogues and Mages, making up the most iconic composition, RMP. Shadow Priests are often played together with Warlocks, as together their dots rot their enemies to death, and priests also have a decent range of CC available to them. With an AoE fear, a blanket silence, and a stun, they can very easily keep someone locked up enough to land a kill. On screen is a first look at the priest tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Alt of the Incarnates. If you're looking to play a disciple of both the Light and the Void with incredible strength and versatility, definitely check out the priest. In the face of demonic power, most heroes see death. Warlocks see only opportunity. Dominance is their aim, and they have found a path to it in the Dark Arts. While many Warlocks willingly follow the Burning Legion, there are those who work against it, using their magic to fight against evil. Warlocks have proven themselves to be powerful allies as well as powerful foes. But their desire to understand darker magics and exercise unwavering command over demonic forces breeds mistrust among even their closest friends. Warlocks are the bane of all life. Empowered by demonic blood, they can inflict great torment and drain the vitality from their victims, summon and command indomitable demons from the twisting nether to do their bidding, or employ fire magic, dropping hellish rain from the sky to immolate the opposition. Their greatest abilities are fueled by the souls they've harvested from their victims. The Warlock is a damage dealing spellcaster class, known for their wide range of debuffs and damage over time effects, or recognizable demonic minions at their side, which are used to assist them in taking down foes, as well as provide both offensive and defensive utility. Each one has their own strengths, collectively providing purges, silences and dispels that you'd usually otherwise need multiple classes for. They're a must have in any raid scenario, and frankly a group would be silly to go without one. They bring summoning portals, hellstones, demonic gateway, a combat res with soulstone, an AoE stun with shadow fury, and even a spammable fear. Despite wearing cloth armor, they are also incredibly tanky and hard to pin down with strong cooldowns like dark pact and unending resolve, their passive soul eat shield, and their incredible self sustain with drain life in a pinch. Affliction warlocks are the masters of damage over time spells plaguing their enemies with an array of curses and dots. The bulk of their damage comes from keeping up three main debuffs, Agony, Corruption, and Unstable Affliction, which can be further empowered through Talents and your Mastery stat. Some Talents offer flat damage increases, where others like Haunt and Malefic Affliction will create interactions between your damage over time spells and your main Soul Shard spender, Malefic Rapture. Soul Shards will be generated consistently from Ticks of Agony and a new talent called Soul Tap, which will trade some of your defensive absorption in Soul Leech for damage resources. There are plenty of things you can pick up to top the meters in Mythic Plus. With Sow the Seeds and Vile Taint, you can quickly get Corruption and Agony stacked up on entire groups, and then pop a Soul Rot to give a ton of crit and haste. Their main damage cooldown Dark Glare will summon an Observer, extending the duration of all of your dots and deal increased damage depending on the number of dots you have active on any amount of targets. Demonology Warlocks summon and empower entire armies of various demons to do their bidding. They generate their Soul Shards from Shadow Bolt and instant cast Demon Bolts. They can then use these Shards on Hand of Gul'dan to summon Wild Imps which will fling fire bolts at your target until their energy is exhausted. As well as their usual pets, opting for Felguard in this spec, they can call Dreadstalkers to cleave your enemies, Vile Fiends to poison them, and Barscourge Bombers for burst AoE aerial assault. The Felguard pet can be buffed through various talents like Demonic Strength, 
to make his blade storm extremely potent or with the new guillotine talent which will cause it to throw its axe into the ground dealing aoe damage and sending it into a demonic frenzy pummeling and cleaving enemies with his bare fists their main signature cooldown is Demonic Tyrant, which when summoned will extend the duration of all active pets summoned, causing you to be able to amass the iconic demon army. This can go even further with the Nether Portal talent, a huge 3 minute cooldown during which you will rip countless demons from the Twisting Nether into your service. And on top of this, a Pit Lord will emerge when it closes, gaining power for every soul shard spent during the cooldown. Although Demonology Warlocks specialize in single target damage and cyclical gameplay, they can choose to implode their imps at any moment for incredible instant area of effect damage. This is extremely powerful on waves of lesser enemies who won't live long and it looks absolutely amazing. Destruction Warlocks can call down the sky upon their enemies, specializing in potent burst damage and fire spells. Instead of generating entire shards at once, Destruction Warlock build their fragmented shards slowly with damage from Immolate and casts of Incinerate and Conflagration. They spend those shards on hard hitting abilities like Chaos Bolts, which will always deal a critical strike, and Rain of Fire on AoE. The spells can be duplicated with the unique ability Havoc, marking a target to receive 60% of all your single target damage for 15 seconds, creating awesome visuals in the process and in dragonflight they can also choose between this usual havoc ability or make it automatic with the talent mayhem which will give you a chance to apply havoc to nearby enemies anytime you cast single target abilities destruction warlock can cool down terrifying infernals from the sky stunning all enemies upon impact and fighting by your side for 30 seconds these infernals will burn everything around them and with the reign of chaos talent you can also spawn in smaller infernals providing significant shard generation. On screen is a first look at the warlocks tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of dragonflight vault of the incarnates. If unparalleled subjugation of demons and almost unlimited survivability is what you're after then you can't go wrong with the warlock. To protect the weak, to bring justice to the unjust and to vanquish evil from the darkest corners of the world. This is the call of the Paladin. As warriors of the Holy Light, Paladins uphold all that is good and true in the world and revile all that is evil and sinister, especially the undead scourge and the demons of the Burning Legion. These holy warriors are equipped with plate armor so they can confront the toughest of foes and the blessing of the light allows them to heal wounds and even restore life to the dead. Ready to serve, paladins can defend their allies with sword and shield or they can wield massive two-handed weapons against their enemies. So long as they believe their cause to be just, the light will always continue to serve a paladin, sometimes for evil, because wielding the light is a matter of willpower and faith in one's own ability to do it. The paladin is a hybrid class with the ability to play all three major roles, healing, tanking and DPS. They have auras and blessings that provide useful buffs for other players while wearing plate armor to heavily mitigate damage and possess strong defensive abilities and self-healing in order to survive incoming attacks. In addition to mana, paladins have a unique resource system called holy power, similar to the rogue's combo points. Holy power can be gained through frequent usage of certain signature abilities such as crusader strike and judgment and is used for casting high value spells or spenders such as Templar's Verdict, Shield of the Righteous, and Word of Glory. Up to five Holy Power can be stored at once. Protection Paladins use Holy Magic to shield themselves and defend allies from attackers. Protection is a spec that's good for players who enjoy a classic tank feel combined with the ability to self-heal considerable damage. They're exceptional tanks, excelling at pulling and holding the attention of multiple mobs simultaneously through the use of reactive threat abilities such as Consecration and Blessed Hammer, not only do they have great threat and damage, but they also have amazing off heals to use on themselves or others in their party. In fact, prop paladins have such strong healing that they have been known to complete group content without a healer present at all. On top of their passive healing and high uptime active mitigation through their holy power spender Shield of the Righteous, they also have a wide range of incredibly strong defensives for when you find yourself in a tight spot. Ardent Defender is a 20% damage reduction ability on a short cooldown with a cheat death effect built into it, Eye of Tear is a 25% damage reduction and a DPS ability on only a 1 minute cooldown, Guardian of the Ancient Kings is a 50% damage reduction on a long cooldown, 
and lay on hands will refill yours or an ally's entire health bar. Divine Shield can also be used as protection and is a complete immunity and will torn all targets within 15 yards while active if you take the final stand talent. Most of these defensives also have some kind of interaction with your normal abilities as well, rewarding good performance of your active rotation with cooldown reduction on your defensives, making you more tanky. Retribution Paladins favor slow two-handed weapons, causing sudden damage spikes through both melee and spell crits. The core of their rotation is centered around using abilities like Judgment, Blade of Justice, and Crusader Strike to generate Holy Power, which is consumed to deal devastating damage with abilities like Templar's Verdict on a single target or Divine Storm for AoE. They're known for being a two-minute class with incredible bursts in their cooldowns, Avenging Wrath or Crusade, and for their instant upfront AoE damage with Wake of Ashes and Final Reckoning. With further buffs to spells like Consecration and Dragonflight, Rep Paladins are looking very strong for sustained cleave damage as well as burst, which should see them perform well in dungeon content along with the great utility that they bring. Holy Paladins don't mind getting up close and personal with their foes. They use the power of light to protect their allies and drive off their enemies. The class has some of the most mana efficient low threat healing spells in the game, allowing a Paladin to easily fill the position of a main tank's healer in a party or raid, especially with their Beacon of Light ability mimicking all healing you do to your chosen target. Though Paladins do lack a spammable area of effect healing ability, they can offset this somewhat by choosing the talent Beacon of Virtue, essentially making their single target heals cleave. Holy Paladins will find themselves in melee range for a couple of reasons. Firstly, they'll need to use Crusader Strike to generate Holy Power for efficient heals. Holy Power Spenders cost zero mana. And secondly, their healing is increased by proximity to their targets through their mastery. Although this isn't something you have to overly think about, so you won't need to run over to every ally before you heal them. They also boast some of the strongest raid cooldowns in Aura Mastery and Hand of Sacrifice. Ability has always been a downside for Paladins, but with Divine Steed and Cavalier and good planning, you should be more than fine. In PvP, Paladins are infamous for outlasting opponents and being able to adapt to a variety of situations. Both Rare and Holy Paladins are also capable of doing surprising amount of burst damage, and stuns like Hammer of Justice provide plenty of utility and setup. On screen is a first look at the Paladins tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If playing a melee with strong group support regardless of your spec and some very powerful cooldown sounds appealing, then Paladin might be the class for you. Druids are the guardians of nature, who harness the power of the world around them to preserve balance and protect life. Druids have unmatched versatility on the battlefield. This is in part because druidism is much more than a fighting discipline. Druids harness nature's raw energy for an incredible breadth of offensive and defensive abilities, as well as to restore life to the wounded. Through communion with nature and the demigod Cenarius, druids are supernaturally endowed with the gift of shapeshifting. With experience, Druids can unleash nature's raw energy against their enemies, raining down celestial fury on them from a great distance, binding them with enchanted vines or ensnaring them in unrelenting cyclones. They are deeply in tune with the animal spirits of Azeroth. As master shapeshifters, Druids can take on the form of a variety of beasts, morphing into bears, cats, moonkins, and even ancient trees. This flexibility allows them to fill different roles during their adventures, tearing enemies to shreds with their claws one minute and surveying the battlefield from the sky the next. Being the only class with four different specializations and being able to fill all three role types, including both ranged and melee DPS, they are truly a jack of all trades and a great class overall for people who like to mix things up. Guardian Druid is a fairly straightforward tank specialization, but still an amazing option with how much damage mitigation they have with their almost permanent and stackable iron fur survival instincts, and their massive health pools. On top of this, they have access to insanely powerful cooldowns in the form of Incarnation and Rage of the Sleeper, both being able to make you almost unkillable while at the same time putting out so much damage on AoE that you'll be topping the meters in Mythic Plus. Feral rips and tears through enemies having roguelike gameplay, building and spending combo points on huge ferocious bites Feral has been neglected over the past few expansions, but are looking very promising going into Dragonflight, with their damage profile being somewhat changed to once again rely on bleeds and damage over time effects. 
a very nice change considering that consistent and considerable AoE damage has been something they've struggled with for a while. Balanced Druids historically have had it pretty good. They have increased range, good burst damage and sustained AoE with a dot playstyle, tankiness in both PvE and PvP. They excel at dealing consistent damage to spread out targets, multi-dotting them with Sunfire and Moonfire, all while raining down a Starfall to everything in their range. They don't suffer much from target capping, so if you like to pull big in Mythic Plus, or farm a lot of enemies in the open world, you'll probably fall in love with this spec. Resto Druids are a welcome addition to any group, providing the ability to cover the group in heal over time effects or HOTS. This is particularly sought after because it allows a proactive playstyle of buffing your allies with these HOTS before large amounts of damage even go out. Being able to cast up to 4 different HOTS on any player beforehand means you've already put in half the work and can focus your attention on anyone who needs some extra care. Possibly making use of various externals you have, like Ironbark or an instant heal with Swiftmend. All specs have access to good and frequent uses of defensives, with Barkskin being on only a 1 minute cooldown, you'll rarely find yourself in trouble. And in those cases, shapeshift forms are not locked to your spec, so in order to survive you can always just hop into bear form for a few seconds. Druids are mandatory to have in a raiding environment, due to easily having one of the most powerful major cooldown toolkits in the entire game, including the ability to battle res a fallen teammate during combat, reposition enemies with Typhoon, innovating healers to assist with mana efficiency, and even bring Stampeding Roar to give all your allies in range a large movement speed buff for 8 seconds. This is incredibly useful in a raid setting as it can assist in the shuffling of your entire group from one side of a boss room to the other, and even in Mythic Plus will help you move from pack to pack with its short cooldown. Druids also have access to a talent called Heart of the Wild, which will allow you to greatly increase your affinity to any of the other specializations you aren't currently using. This can lead to heroic moments where you can fill in for a healer or a tank for up to 45 seconds if something goes wrong, as well as vice versa, if healers and tanks get a moment to put out damage, they can become considerably more potent. Druids have performed consistently well throughout most of Shadowlands, with at least one of the specs being prominent in the top level of play across PvE and PvP in every season. This trend is expected to continue into Dragonflight. On screen is a first look at the Druid's tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If you're looking for a class that can truly do it all, then look no further than the Druid. The elements are chaotic and left to their own devices, they rage against one another in unending primal fury. It is the call of the shaman to bring balance to this chaos, acting as mediators among earth, fire, water and air. Shamans can bend the elements to their will, enhancing their weapons with elemental effects, summoning totems that support their allies or punish those who threaten them. To battle a shaman is to taunt the very forces of nature itself. They can even call upon elemental forces directly, unleashing torrents of lava and bolts of lightning. They can manipulate the land itself to summon powerful elementals, spirits of earth, fire and storm to their side, or take upon the form of an ascendant. The shaman is a hybrid class, able to specialize in offensive spellcasting, melee damage dealing or healing. As such, the class is considered highly adaptable and versatile. Shamans can also use a selection of stationary totems to gain a wide variety of effects, from restoring mana and automatically healing allies to snaring and stunning foes. On top of this, they bring the iconic bloodlust and heroism buffs, depending on your faction, massively buffing all allies with haste. Certain shamans have dedicated themselves above all else to forging a deep bond with the elements and have peered beyond the elemental plane. These are the elemental shamans, powerful spellcasters fulfilling the DPS role to blast and scorch enemies from afar. They operate by building their primary resource Maelstrom through lightning and lava bursts and spending it on powerful nukes in the form of Earthshock, Earthquake and Elemental Blast. Their talent tree design presents a huge range of builds to try with so many extra abilities you can pick up along the way. Unleash your inner Sith Lord with Chain Lightning Obliteration and Double Stormkeeper Charges Focus on area of effect with liquid magma spewing from the earth, an unending spam of earthquakes capable of knocking down enemies, interrupting their spellcasting in the process. Choose between powerful fire and storm elementals and enhance them further by becoming a primal elementalist, and by taking the ascendance talent you can transform into a turret, firing an endless barrage of lava bursts, without cooldown, into a single target, or turning your chain lightning into lava beam. 
Your spells can also be duplicated by the iconic Mastery Elemental Overload, leading to some amazing animations and extra resource generation. Enhancement Shamans are melee based damage dealers who crush their opponents with dual wield one handed weapons and can elementally empower these weapons further with their signature Wind Fury and Flame Tongue abilities. The Wind Fury imbue is famous for duplicating your melee attacks and with enough mastery the Doom Wind's cooldown can guarantee all your attacks to trigger Wind Fury for a time, stacking up a large damage increase with the Forceful Wind's talent. Enhancement is a unique melee spec that derives a large portion of its damage from spells their main focus involves using elemental infused melee strikes with storm strike, lava lash, crash lightning and ice strike while using maelstrom weapon to cast powerful spells instantly. The spec is well suited for players who enjoy a close up battle mage playstyle with an emphasis on quick decision making as you react to a variety of different cooldowns and buffs with its fast paced and hectic playstyle, especially with the potential to chain together back to back storm strike resets with Stormbringer. And to top things off, you have strong cooldowns like Feral Spirits, summoning a pair of immensely powerful Spirit Wolves, each one buffing plus 20% to a school of magic while tearing your enemies to shreds, or Ascendants that will allow you to spam Storm Strike and bypass armor. Some Shamans find a serene affinity for the restorative properties of water. A Resto Shaman will be trying to spread Riptide over as many allies as possible covering them in heal over time effect. Every time you cast this ability, you'll gain a buff called Tidal Waves, increasing the effectiveness of your next two main healing abilities. This creates a style of healing where you'll be weaving these Riptides between your other heals, and support those furthermore with good AoE healing potential, with Healing Rain, Chain Heal, and Wellspring. These in combination with the signature Earth Shield on an ally can make for some great spot healing on a tank, while your totems support the rest of the group. Two very strong cooldowns, a healing tide, a huge heal over time on everybody, similar to a Resto Druid's Tranquility and the very sought after Spirit Link Totem, adding together the health of everybody who stands in range and turning it into one health pool, rebalancing and negating damage. This is incredibly strong at smoothing out large spiky damage intakes on a raid or saving someone's life in a pinch. No matter which spec you play, you'll have access to powerful utilities such as Hex, Purge and Earth Elemental, or the iconic Thunderstorm, a powerful knockback ability notorious for propelling enemies from high ledges in PvP. On screen is a first look at the Shaman's tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If you wish to play the class that everybody wants and needs, and make people's lives easier just by existing, I definitely recommend the Shaman. Monks are masters of barehanded combat, and never rely solely on the need to have a weapon in their hands to defend against their enemies. Although most widely known to the outside world for their fearsome jabs and flying kicks, they refuse to limit themselves to a single method of combat. Many monks prefer instead to soak it up and seem to revel in the intoxicating effect of absorbing blow after blow while their companions press the attack. Other monks specialize in calling upon the restorative power of the mists to balance the good and bad energy within people, returning them to good health and fortune. They seek spiritual balance in life and combat and as dangerous as monks can be on the battlefield, they're rarely looking to pick a fight without just cause. Perhaps most surprisingly, monks are also adept at producing powerful brews that they consume to aid them in battle. Monks wear leather armor, but have some great defensives and unparalleled mobility to make up for it. They also provide their allies with the Mystic Touch debuff. This is similar to that of the Demon Hunter, but instead providing 5% damage increase to anything physical. Brewmasters are sturdy brawlers who use unpredictable movement and mystical brews to avoid damage and protect their allies. They play around high dodge chance with their stacking dodge mastery and by staggering damage taken, taking a portion of it over 10 seconds instead of it being all up front to the face. And they further increase this stagger cap by maintaining a buff called shuffle. This is done through their rotation and using their hard hitting abilities. By taking large hits without active mitigation, over time your stagger debuff will grow very large, at which point monks can cleanse a portion of it with purifying brew. This, along with a decent selection of self heals through shields, healing spheres and elixirs, creates a fairly smooth damage intake profile as long as you can keep your brews on low cooldown. Keg Smash and Tiger Palm will reduce the cooldowns of all brews by a couple of seconds each use, so you are rewarded for playing better by becoming more tanky. And if things ever get too much, you can always roll away and throw down a ring of peace while you wait for cooldowns. Windwalkers are martial artists who pummel their foes with hands and fists. 
By spending energy, they build up chi, which they use to unleash their most powerful attacks like Fists of Fury, Rising Sun Kick, and Spinning Crane Kick. Windwalker gameplay revolves around usually never casting the same ability twice in a row, so you'll find yourself doing combos to keep your mastery rolling. They have very strong offensive cooldowns in Storm, Earth, and Fire, splitting your elemental powers into three spirits, of which you will control one. These spirits can duplicate your attacks and be set to attack enemies at random or to focus one target in particular. Windwalker monks can also call upon the mighty spirit of Zuen to aid them in battle, who will deal huge damage and can grant a large haste bonus. Dragonflight has also removed a large pain point for Windwalker, making it slightly easier to mark enemies on AoE with the shadow boxing talent, causing your blackout kicks to cleave, and therefore applying a mark of the crane to multiple enemies in a single use. What it lacked in Shadowlands was single target damage, but with that now being addressed, it's looking to be very strong in Dragonflight. Mistweavers are healers who master the mystic art of manipulating life energies aided by the wisdom of Yulon the Jade Serpent and Chiji the Red Crane. They are a melee based healer from which they are able to heal their allies and deal damage to enemies simultaneously. They are able to use their high mobility to react appropriately to encounter mechanics, using either abilities that directly affect movement itself or spells that can be cast while moving, allowing them to continue healing while repositioning. They spread hots over the raid with Renewing Mist and echo their heals across the group with Essence Font and their mastery, Gust of Mist. They also have great priority target healing with Enveloping Mist, providing a heal over time and a 40% increased healing received to any chosen ally. Soothing Mist can also turn you into a turret, not only providing healing throughput, but also making your larger heals instant cast. On top of this, they have some great healing cooldowns through Life Cocoon and Revival, one acting like a massive bubble shield and a healing external at the same time, while Revival will heal every single person in the raid for a large amount in one single global. With the great defensive capabilities in Fortifying Brew, Dampen Harm and Diffuse Magic, Monks have an answer to any kind of incoming damage, if they can't dodge it entirely by rolling. They also bring utility in the form of Paralyze, Leg Sweep and Ring of Peace, giving great CC options on fairly low cooldown. In Arena, Monks are very slippery and hard to catch, especially Mistweavers, and they can choose opportune moments to deal high burst damage, even going through large defensives. With Transcendence and their strong CC capabilities, they have a great toolkit for almost any matchup. On screen is a first look at the Monks tier sets and bonuses for the first raid in Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If you want to master Kung Fu, have extremely high mobility, and be able to fill all roles with very different playstyles, then definitely consider checking out the Monk. Demon Hunters. They are the disciples of Illidan's Stormrage. They uphold a dark legacy, one that frightens their allies and enemies alike. The Illidari embrace fell and chaotic magics, energies that have long threatened the world of Azeroth believing them necessary to challenge the Burning Legion. Wielding the powers of demons they've slain, they develop demonic features themselves that incite revulsion and dread in fellow elves. Demon hunters made a pact long ago to fight against the forces of chaos, using their own terrible powers against it. They ritually blind themselves in exchange for spectral sight that enables them to better sense their prey. This enhanced awareness, together with their great agility and magical prowess, makes Demon Hunters unpredictable adversaries. They wield demonically charged warblades and warglaives in battle, and call upon demonic energies to augment their formidable combat skills. If an elf manages not to go completely insane throughout the process of becoming a Demon Hunter, they become a worthy adversary to any being of the Burning Legion. Demon Hunters are one of the only classes in the game that have just two specs, but can fill the tank or the DPS role, packing a punch in both PvE and PvP with high burst and extreme ability. They also provide extra magic damage to themselves and their allies through their Chaos Brand debuff that adds 5% magic damage to your entire raid. Donning leather armor, they could be thought of as squishy, but make up for it with magic resistance and leech through their talents, along with incredible defensives like blur and darkness. Both specs are very easy to pick up and play, very user-friendly and most importantly fun. Through a mixture of high mobility dashes or leaps, firing fell fire lasers from your eyes, double jumping and gliding, and even becoming a demon yourself through metamorphosis, you'll have a hard time putting this class down. The DPS spec Havoc focuses on large burst damage, both single target and in AoE, 
and also offers a mixture of different playstyles. Choose between focusing on magic and bleed damage over time, optimizing time spent inside demon form, hard hitting short cooldown burst windows with essence break, or the infamous momentum playstyle, where you'll be using your ability to increase your damage. It has many tools at its disposal, bringing utility with stuns, imprisons, purges, and in Dragonflight, the addition of sigils. With fast resource generation, switching targets quickly also has almost no downsides. When it comes to their tank spec Vengeance, they have a strong all-round toolkit that combines top-tier damage mitigation with strong self-healing and utility. Vengeance tanks are currently one of the only two tanks that have a cheat death passive as well. This is great if you should find yourself in a rocky situation. However, it's a last resort. <laughs> there are a couple of different ways to play the spec too. You'll have the ability to lean into either having more damage or more defensive capabilities, and even build full glass cannon to compete with DPS specs. This however will push you to instead use your mobility as your mitigation, leaping out of harm's way to be healed up, or to buy time for your mitigation cooldowns to become ready again. Vengeance is an amazing Mythic Plus tank, and by no means a weak raid tank, especially since they've received decent buffs to their single target damage in Dragonflight, so you should have no issue clearing all types of contents with this spec. When it comes to arenas, Havoc Demon Hunter is similar to Warrior, with very high consistent damage, great mobility, healing reduction or immortal strike effect in the form of a talent which buffs their blade dance, and an easy to learn gameplay style that fits fantastically with the healer in 2v2, and even a few certain 3v3 comps. Havoc historically has been up and down in both raiding and mythic plus, however we are yet to see it be unused. Throughout the expansions, at some points they've been incredible, and at other points, more recently in Shadowlands, a little lackluster. Perhaps still seeing them is to do with them bringing Chaos Brand, or maybe it's because they're always useful in some way, with their stuns and raid defensive in the form of darkness. There has been some negative stigma recently about them, because of their two button style of gameplay, but with Sinful Brand gone going into Dragonflight, DH is looking as strong as ever, with the skill cap also having some room to increase with the addition of new builds. On screen is a first look at Demon Hunter's tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Bolt of the Incarnates. Overall, the Demon Hunter is an insanely cool class and my personal favourite, with the low barrier to entry, yet the ability to really showcase your skill with your movement and damage windows, you'll never be left bored with this class in any type of content. Death Knights, the unholy warriors of death. They wield dark magic and rune-forged weapons, spreading their pestilence among their foes, often debilitating them, rendering them vulnerable and weak to a slaughter. Death Knights engage their foes up close, supplementing swings of their weapons with dark magic to deal a mixture of physical and magic damage. They can drag foes into one-on-one -on -one conflicts, prevent their enemies from fleeing their grasp, and even call upon entire armies of ghouls to assist them in tearing apart anyone who should stand in their way. And if an ally should fall, Death Knights answer, and can raise them straight back up again to continue the fight. To protect themselves from death and battle, Death Knights are clad in heavy plate armor and parry attacks with their blades. They have a personal connection to their blades, and can forge runes into them in order to increase their power. Death Knights are powerful in both PvE and PvP, with two DPS specs, and can even be a top tier tank with the blood specialization which focuses on increasing their survivability through lots and lots of self-healing as well as frequent damage mitigation cooldowns. Blood Death Knights are generally known for taking it to the face and relying more on their own abilities to heal themselves back up than trusting in a healer to do it for them. This can create some nice gameplay where you can take more risk as the power is in your own hands. It can also be very punishing though because mismanagement of your resources and cooldowns can lead to a swift death. Keeping your bone shield up will be of high importance as well as generating as much runic power as you can to fuel your death strikes. Doing this well in combination with your strong cooldowns like Dancing Rune Weapon and Vampiric Blood will make sure you never have to make use of the Purgatory Talent, which will allow you to cheat death for a short time. There are even more damage oriented builds as well to take advantage of like the iconic The Unholy specialization focuses more on improving your diseases and summons. This is as close as you'll get to a necromancer in WoW, allowing you to permanently control an undead ghoul, improve your army of the dead with frequent uses of apocalypse, and even summon an undead gargoyle terror from the skies. Rot your enemies to death with damage over time diseases, 
bursting sores and pustules, made more potent through talents like Ebon Fever and Plaguebringer. Surround yourself in unholy blight while smashing your foes to pieces with death coils, or erupt your diseases in AoE with Epidemic to do huge amounts of damage with quadratic scaling. Unholy death knights can transform their ghouls into undead monstrosities every 45 seconds, bonding them to the player with flaming chains, cutting through anyone standing between them. This spec is methodical and focuses on setting up windows of opportunity and execute phases to get out the most damage. Frost Death Knights focus more on upfront damage, being able to do huge amounts of bursts, single target and cleave. These Death Knights cripple their enemies, slowing their escapes by freezing their very blood. Huge critical strikes are not uncommon for Frost Death Knights, chaining together their obliterates or frost size with killing machine procs to allow free uses of Howling Blast, dealing AoE damage and inflicting everyone around them with disease. Most of their AoE is involved in their single target rotation through talents like Remorseless Winter and Gathering Storm. They can play around having consistent smaller DPS cooldowns through cooldown reduction talents or go for a more burst stacking playstyle with Breath of Syndragosa. This is an iconic ability where you can play a minigame to keep it up for as long as possible, dealing absolutely massive damage in the process. And if all else fails, well, just call upon a huge frost worm to nuke everything in the area with an icy breath. All three specializations have incredible defensive capabilities too, being able to place down an anti-magic zone which will significantly increase the survivability of your raid, free yourself from stuns with icebound fortitude, and stop the application of magic effects with anti-magic shield, frost and unholy death knights can reach near unkillable status in PvP too with Lich Pawn and Death Strikes for self-healing. One minor downside to Death Knights is that they can be less mobile than other classes, with no major gap closers aside from Death Grip. However, good use of Death's Advance and Wraith War can somewhat negate this, and with Abomination Limb being in the base talent tree in Dragonflight, there will be no escaping this class if they want a little one-on-one -on -one time. On screen is a first look at Death Knight tier sets and bonuses for the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. If you're looking for a strong melee fighter that is great for tanking and DPS overall with an incredible class fantasy, then you can't go wrong with a Death Knight. Every Drakthir is an expert soldier. They use their talents to defend Dragonkind in obedience to the Earth Warder. Yet even among such illustrious ranks, there are a select few who transcend the skills of their kin. These are the Evokers. The best of the best, finest of the fine, created by Neltharion to wield the power of all five Dragonflights. These elite forces possess the rare potential to focus their essences into an instrument of preservation or a weapon of devastation. The journey to such mastery is long, and few Drakthir can see this path through, but those who learn to harness their full potential shall be honoured with the title of Evoker. They use a Build-A-Spender resource system in the form of Essence, with their bigger damage and healing spells consuming Essence when used. They also have a completely unique spell type called Empower. By holding down the ability, the player can charge up a spell. The longer the spell is charged up, the more effective it is. Evoker's spells each have a color associated with them. You will gain talents and other abilities that will affect an entire color class of spells, and knowing how these spells interact with one another will go a long way toward improving your effectiveness. Using the quick and explosive power of the Red Dragonflight, or the focused and overwhelming magic of the Blue Dragonflight, the Devastation Evoker can shoot at enemies from a distance. Red spells will focus on unleashing your dragon's fury, burning enemies with fire breath and extending that fire breath to deal damage over time, meanwhile bombarding them with pyres and firestorms. Blue spells will focus on cleaving and very, very hard hitting channels. Each side of your talent tree will buff one sort of spell more than others. However, both schools of red and blue do have crossover mechanics and you will definitely be rewarded for identifying these and playing around them. Similarly, preservation serves as a healing specialization Using abilities of the Bronze Dragonflight, they can manipulate time to heal wounds faster, duplicate healing received, or rewind damage intake entirely. All of this aids your nurturing power of the Green Dragonflight, and these green spells will be used as your main throughput heals, and Dream Breath to apply heal over time to your party. Drakthir possesses some interesting racial abilities. Similarly to Worgen, you have both a Drakthir form and a Visage form, both very customizable. 
and you are able to switch between them out of combat, with a visage form offering extra health regen. Saw will allow you to dragon ride anywhere, including old world zones, and wing buffet and tail swipe can be used for CC, knocking enemies back and up respectively. The focus have a slightly shorter range than other casters, being able to stand only 30 yards away from their targets instead of the usual 40. This is something to take into consideration when planning your positioning. In a group setting, they bring a lot to the table, with a bloodlust and time warp buff through Fury of the Aspects, off heals, a raid buff, blessing of the bronze, granting themselves and their allies cooldown reduction to their class specific signature movement ability. Along with a raid cooldown, time spiral, allowing the whole group to use their movement abilities, even if they're on cooldown. For their personal mobility, they possess a jump and glide feature similar to Demon Hunters, a dash forward and move speed buff in Hover, this also lets you cast while moving for a time, the ability to leap to an ally whilst healing them, or even to rescue an ally, leaping to them and actually picking them up and forcibly moving them to a targeted destination. On top of this, one of your cooldowns, Deep Breath, will move you up to 50 yards while dealing damage to everything in your path. They wear male armor, but are quite tanky. To go along with their self-healing, they also have a very strong defensive in Obsidian Scales, providing 30% flat damage reduction, working on a charge system. So you should have it ready for most of the time you need it. There's also an awesome ability called Renewing Blaze, healing back all the damage you take for the next 8 seconds. This could be extremely strong if you plan ahead and use it wisely. On screen is a first look at the Evoker's tier sets and bonuses in the first raid of Dragonflight, Vault of the Incarnates. There are some extremely cool features for the Evoker, and I'm looking forward to playing one myself. Thankfully, most of the best stuff is available baseline and not tied to a particular spec, and there seems to be decent room to make some really heroic plays. If you're looking to stand out, you will certainly be rewarded for playing the Evoker well. And that just about wraps it up, guys. If you enjoyed the show, have a cookie. I'd appreciate a like and consider subscribing. And if you want to catch me playing any of these classes live, I stream over at twitch.tv forward slash just Russ, and I'll see you in the next video.